you don't want to just convert to black and white. You need to consider the colors themselves. Now here, I'm going to give you an example. As you can see here, I have red, yellow, and green boxes. Pretty simple, right? Okay, first thing you do is, you know, hit control U, drag the saturation down, it's black and white. Now I did that for years in Photoshop, I admit. But what's the problem? Gray, gray, gray. They're all just gray. Let me control Z this. Now here's what I'm gonna do instead. Adjustment layer, black and white. And what do you know? We've preserved the uniqueness of these three different colors. Now with the black and white adjustment layer, this is my favorite way to convert to black and white. You can adjust the reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, and magentas individually. This is a really powerful tool I highly recommend working with. You see, with the reds, I can darken them and brighten them. The yellows, I can brighten them, I can darken them. Greens, same thing. So here we've, we've been able to go in and control and preserve the uniqueness of these colors after converting it to black and white. Right now with this example, this is gonna be a good one to show how making different creative decisions with the sliders can get different results. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make an adjustment to the canvas here. With the width, I'm going to do 200%, move this over, and I'm going to hit Control J to bring up a new layer via a copy and just bring this over here. So we've got two versions. And now on this lower one here, adjustment layer and black and white adjustment. Now I'm only gonna really mess with these reds and yellows here. Now since there was so much red in the sweater, notice what happens when I bring it down. Like I can immediately make it look like it was black. And now what I can do with the yellows here to compensate, I like the idea that the trees in the background are kind of fading off here. I think if I wanted to really, really bring, bring out those darks, or I can really, by doing this, I can really accentuate, really accentuate, like it's starting to bring out her skin tones and it's starting to make the image kind of impactful. I kind of like it like that. So like, the brightest areas on her hair and her skin are really standing out. Now in this one, let's do another black and white adjustment layer. Let's do the opposite. I'm gonna brighten the red and I can make it look like it was white. And again with the yellows, now you notice her face is, is a little bit blown out, but by bringing it down again, there you go. I think that's pretty interesting. Again, these aren't, in this particular image, they're not really gonna do a whole lot. But that's just one example of how, you know, in making different creative decisions can make a huge impact when you're converting black and white by changing the values of the colors using this adjustment layer. All right, now in this example, it's gonna be very similar. Let me double click on this and bring up my black and white adjustment layer. Now, what you notice right away, one issue is, you know, the way the lighting is, you've got all these, this green and all this yellow here, and there's like a hard line here. So when you convert this to black and white, I'm not sure, it's like her head kind of gets lost a little bit. But now, look what we can do. First of all, let's just do like, if you bring up the reds, like, whoa, kind of the other direction but you do that and it's kind of eliminating them you can do it with the yellows as well maybe just let it be a little different but not too much now with these cyans by bringing those up I can really bring up this rock here and those blues are really helping. It's also pushing this element back. 
in the atmosphere. Magenta's working on her hand here and then the shadow on that leg. You see here what we've done very easily is created nice separation whereas before without it you know you didn't have when you immediately converted it to black and white the first time it was a little bit hard to see the subject from the background but now we've kind of fixed that so it's a lot more useful um, it's another thing you have to keep in mind when you're converting to black and white is that sometimes you might have contrast issues and you might need to adjust that. All right, now in this, I wanna show you another thing, which is just how converting to black and white can really add kind of a dramatic impact to an image. Now what we have here is a very nice colorful photo, but I think with turning this to black and white, it's a good example of how an image like this can really, can really look unique when you convert it to black and white and can serve a completely different purpose. So, black and white. Now I'll start moving the reds. I do like kind of losing the background. At first they were kind of both seeming kind of significant, but by doing that, she is looking way more significant now than the background is. Like how this magenta is affecting her eye shadow there to the reds just that again mm. yeah I like that I think that's very dramatic now just with that one adjustment layer like yeah that's a good photo it's bright and colorful but now I feel like there's so much more of a dramatic impact on this character now let's take that a little bit further and let's add a vignette I'm going to create a new layer. There's different ways to do this. This is my way of doing it. I'm just going to hit all backspace, build a foreground. You can do a solid color layer as well. Bring the opacity down to about 50% or so. Hit E for eraser and just go boom like that. Control T to bring up the transform and I'm just going to hold shift just sort of do that hit enter I'm okay with that and then from here filter blur Gaussian blur and I'm just gonna blur this real well and bring it down and bring it up just a bit and you see that just that little bit really helps to kind of focus your eye on the subject there. Like you're really framing this person as a really significant individual here. If that's what you're trying to do. And one more thing that we can do again, we just I'm going to go ahead and convert for smart filters. Okay. And then filter, filter gallery, artistic and film grain. Let me move the camera out here so we can see what we're doing. You can adjust all the individual, if you've never worked with these before, you can adjust these individual sliders here with the grain amount. The highlight area, it's a bit much. Maybe about here. And this is, you know, I don't go into this knowing exactly what my numbers are supposed to be. I'm just sliding it around and just using my best judgment. And I think that's good. And I'm going to leave it like that. And you can turn that filter on and off just by doing that. Clicking this eyeball here. And it just gives it a little bit of that classic film grain look. And I feel like just like by doing all this, go to history, click on this icon here to make a, a snapshot. Like that's the original. And that's what we did. It just it's a much different photograph at this point. Like what we started with wasn't wrong, but this is very unique and it can serve a very different purpose if that's what you're going for.
Right now for this last example, this is kind of a bonus tip because this is not actually black and white. But I want to show it to you anyway, so I'm going to double click this background, open it up. Another way to do that is to just click on the click on the lock there. But now I am going to go into the channels and I'm going to do a step that I know to do ahead of time. I'm going to look I'm going to look through these channels and I'm going to see which one has the best lighting information. And I'm saying it's the red because I'm seeing I'm seeing this stuff here like this uh, this rim lighting going on here. There's the green head and the blue have a little less of it. So I'm gonna with the red I'm gonna drag it down to the plus sign here. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do a levels adjustment to so kind of exaggerate it a little and just bring this out. Now why am I doing this? I'm gonna control click this. So I'm making a selection. I'm going to go back in, make sure you have that channel no longer selected so it's just a regular image, and now I'm going to hit Control J. So what I've done is I've created kind of a save state of some of the cool lighting information that's in this image. And I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to do my black and white adjustment. And this wasn't a high contrast photo, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I think it was, I think it was all right to begin with. And yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Maybe do, maybe do a levels. And bring that in a bit. Yeah, I think that helps. All right, that's good. And now I'm going to bring this back on. And you see what that did is it's just adding on that lighting information. And I'm going to set the blending mode to overlay. And I think that looks really cool. I think this is, this is just a unique trick that you can use to try to get this sort of, I don't know how you describe this. It's like just a touch of lighting color on there. I think this is, this is cool by itself. You know, this, this was a really interesting image by itself. Turning it into black and white, it can work either way. But I think that just by doing that, it's a very dynamic, contrasty look with just a touch of color added on top of it. So I hope that maybe that might give you uh, another tool in your, your bag of tricks. Overall, uh, that's the end of the video. I hope this was very helpful for you. Let me know if it was. Uh, black and white, Conversion is uh, something that you don't want to you don't want to sleep on. It's something that you can you can do to make uh, a lot of stock photos seem a little more interesting. Uh, if you're you're working as maybe a graphic designer and you're throwing images in, that might be a good option for you to make me make some color adjustments or some black and white conversions to what you're usually working with. So that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.